And it wasn't a retro thing he was talking about. He was talking about all the pros he knew only had a few tools. It was the rookies that had all the, all the, the big stuff. It's kind of like golf. You know, this, I've made the point several times that these golfers, uh, you know, I, I, <laughs> we did it with Milt, but I used to ask O'Leary, Doc O'Leary, to go find the worst club he could find. And one time I had to do it when we were at Milt's. I went to the pro shop, and they had a bucket of old drivers. It was like a joke. And I picked the worst driver they could find. It was literally unraveling. It was an old persimmon head. It was warped. It was melted and on the backside. It was melted on the backside. Somebody put a cigarette on it or something. And uh, I think we, I found a bad ball. Didn't we find a slice ball? And we found a slice ball, too, I think. Uh, anyway, but the point was, you know, put it down there, and he, and he hit it straight and true. And then we got Bobby Schaefer to hit a ball with a piece of rope, right? Put a knot in a rope, <laughs> knocked it over a house. Huh? You did it too? No, I, I didn't do it with the rope. Did I? Might have. I don't know. I forget. But the point is, uh, uh, actually, just, just to carry that further, you know, I, when I first started golfing, I bought a starter set. It was a cheap little set. It wasn't even, the, the whole set wasn't the cost of what an average club is now. And, you know, now I'm four sets into the game and, you know, being more expensive, I'm just not playing any better. Actually, I have a theory that the worse clubs you have or the less clubs you have, the better you are because you're more relying on kind of a, you know, a touch or a feel. From, from years of playing baseball and stuff, you know, I, can, I can throw a wadded up piece of paper into a trash can from across the room. That's, kind of a, that's a cool little skill. But I, it, it, when I was applying that to golf, I, I was playing pretty good. Then I started trying to listen to people and screwed it all up. So in your business, think about, don't take it for granted what it is that the people want of what you're selling. Uh, talked about consultancy, and we'll, we're going to talk about this in the next ad. Uh, I help the guy in the next ad is one of my favorites. It's one of the more simple ones. It looks like it was typeset by a gang of monkeys that broke into the uh, uh, lithographers. But the big thing was, after talking with the guy, well, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, but after talking with the guy, I figured out that what he was selling wasn't what the guys wanted. And one of the things they wanted, and he was dealing with chiropractors, was more time off. Maybe they didn't really know it because everybody keeps thinking, if I only make more money, all my problems will go away. Now, if that's your market, if you know, it's, it's BizOp, for example. If, if they're thinking, if I can make $100,000, I'll be the richest man on the block and everything will be fine, then that's how you got to sell it. Okay? Don't try to convince them that money isn't everything because the guy that isn't going to try to convince them is going to clean your clock in the market. <laughs> 